Just as your tears are the voice of your heart and your soul, reality is a matter of perception, and your opinion is the voice of your perception. So whatever you feel you're expressing as your opinion is how you see the world, not as the world is seen through other eyes, because how other, people's, how other people perceive this reality is their perception. That's the beauty of it. That's why I don't argue with people. Because what you're doing is you're trying to argue a moot point. It's, you're not going to go anywhere. You're trying to tell somebody you're wrong about how you see life. That's why belief systems are so freaking dangerous. All belief systems are by their very nature, by the very virtue of their existence, disempowering because of this. Instead of celebrating your perception on life with somebody else's and maybe learning from their perception and allowing you to see things a little differently that will broaden your perceptive horizons and your, 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 your eternal vista, people fight each other over it. You're wrong. It's not like that. It's like this. And look at, look at human history. Analyze the annals of human history. There have been more wars fought over religious purposes than any other because of disempowering belief systems. All disempowering belief systems are the very, the very antithesis of consciousness. You know, let me say this again. All disempowering belief systems are the very antithesis of consciousness. That is the divinity of the life force essence of your soul. That means that your disempowering belief system runs contrary to source. This is what stilt you, remained, caused you to remain steadfast and staunch, cemented in your beliefs that you're right and everybody else is wrong. You have every right to believe that your opinion matters and your perception and your identity, but you know, that is the truth, but it's only your truth inside your little circle that you live in. You know, let's call it your imagination. For example, you have a bisexual man who identifies as a woman. Now, genetically, biologically, medically, and physically, he's a man. You can identify with whatever you want, but that doesn't make it so that he's an actual woman physically. He's not. And because of other people's perceptions of what reality is or what it isn't makes it so. But it's only real for the person who believes themselves to be these things. What they don't have a right to do is force that belief on somebody else as, as if it's the only reality there is. Nobody has that right. You could identify with whatever you want. You could identify with the ass end of it out of a dead rhino if you want. That's your that's your trip, you know, straight out. That's your belief, man. That is the reality of your truth, your own personal journey, whatever's inside your head, your imagination. Like let's say, for example, you have a, a really bad life and you don't want to ident you don't want to identify with that reality anymore. So you formulate an alternate ego, an alternate identity, an alternate personality, and everything co coincides with that new life that you create inside your mind inside your imagination. And that's perfectly fine. That's what we have escapism for. But remember, many tend to retreat to a sanctuary of illusions when reality is far too painful. Meaning, if you're not going to focus and live in the moment, where are you going to find yourself? Drifting in the past through escapism? Delusional fantasies? That's not living. That's existing. You've totally negated the point of your purpose of being here on this earth is to be productive for yourself and for others. It isn't to serve the purposes of those that you'll never see that control this infrastructure. That isn't the purpose why you're here. You're not a slave. You're not a parasite. You're not a robot. You're not a prisoner. You're not a puppet. You're not a drone. You know, you have a life that's been given to you by the creator of all creation for a reason. Not to squander it, pressing buttons on your phone, ordering food that comes to your doorstep. That's not the pinnacle of all creation. It goes way beyond that nonsense. You know, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So your opinion is the voice of your perceptive lens and you have the right to express that, but you don't have the right to push that on somebody else. Like how I feel about religion, religion is evil and I could prove it seven ways to Sunday. And religion is not the word of God because if religion were the word of God, religion would be as old as God. But that is not the case that we have here. But everything with what I say in my videos on my channel is just my truth. Sometimes it's facts. You know, it, it's, it's, it's irrefutable facts that I could just have encourage you to research and investigate for yourself. But when I speak about the universe, that's my own truth. It doesn't apply to you. I always say, if you can get something from these videos that is conducive to the forward 
positive progressive developmental evolutionary journey of your own exploration of yourself, then I've done my job well. But at no, at no time I'm trying to say, am I trying to say that this is the only truth there is and bow down before me and you're wrong and I'm right. And it, that, no, that's garbage, man. That's why you have all these disempowering belief systems. I remember years ago, somebody asked me, what do you believe in anyway? I said, nothing. I don't have belief systems. And they looked at me like, huh? What? They couldn't grasp what I was saying. I don't exist in a vacuum of paradigms that causes me to grasp onto these unholy things called belief systems. Because this is the divisive mechanism that separates people and not unites them. It doesn't unite anybody. It just causes division. Instead of celebrating the diversification of our own individual perceptive lens of how we view this life and embrace each other from it and learn from each other, what do people choose to do instead? I'm going to kill you. I will dispatch you with extreme prejudice by any means necessary. Cognitive dissonance is the first one. The second one is ad hominem. You're going to pound these poor people into submission until they relent and until they align their beliefs with your core set of beliefs and values because I've been trained to do it. And you have. Go check out these religious zealots. You know, oh, God and Jesus loves you. You know, praise be, oh, God Almighty. You know, praise God. Oh, Jesus, God bless. And the moment you tell them that their religion's a bunch of garbage, you watch the, the fangs and the talons and the claws come out. You just watch how fast that happens. And those beautiful church-going folks have become bloodthirsty murderers, man. Because they're trained like that. It's all part of the programming mechanism that you unconsciously follow. You know, so your opinion is the voice of your perception. You know, you just have to analyze it because all of your information has been input, inputted into your brain by something else other than you that's outside your control. You have to erase that garbage, get rid of it, deprogram, unlearn, erase the narrative. When you came to this world, you were a blank slate, a clean slate. And society, a.k.a. the system, went, and that is what you refer to as your identity, your source of reference, as far as information, in times of doubt or uncertainty, you always refer to this for answers, solutions, you know, directions, instructions, guidance, support, awareness, information, and everything you're referring to is a, just a page of lies, a page of lies. That's what this whole place is. They told you who you are. They told you what you are because it conforms to the alignment of their agenda in their indoctrination camps, their school systems. You ever wonder why it is that when your parents never send you to school, they start getting those threatening, they start getting those threatening letters from the school board? Do you realize that if a parent did not send their child to school, they would be arrested? Why do you think that is? Why do you think that it is against the law to not send your children to school? Think about it for a minute. How they are adamant about your children being forced into these indoctrination camps. The indigenous had none of that. The elders taught them. They weren't locked up in prison if they didn't decide to attend any of the, the, the sit-downs that the elders had with the children. It was none of that. But in this system, you will be arrested if you don't send your child to school. And cops will come and pull you away. It happens all the time. Think about that. How adamant they are and determined to pull these kids into these indoctrination camps and manipulate them and brainwash them and program them and condition them to be obedient puppets and slaves and parasites and prisoners. That's exactly what's going on, man. Your opinion is the voice of your perceptive lens. You know, listen to the things you're saying because you're just regurgitating parrot fashion what you've been trained to say. And those are not even your words that you're referring to. They've been written by somebody else.